RX Vega 56 at 120 watts? So earlier this month, Acer announced and we covered the upcoming Predator Helios 500. Now they had two different variants of that laptop. One had an, an Intel and Nvidia combination. So the six core i9 and a GTX 1070. Well, they also announced an all AMD variant, one featuring a Ryzen 7 2700 and a Vega 56, but of course a mobile variant of the dedicated uh, desktop graphics card. So it is a discrete GPU, but it is a mobile variant. So with the 2700, it looks like they're keeping at about the 65 watt TDP limit of what the desktop variant gets. So you're gonna get full desktop performance out of it on the mobile side. What about the GPU side? The Vega 56 isn't exactly a power efficient card or is it? See, when we first took a look at our Vega 64 liquid cooled being the highest TDP version of the card that they offered, if we'll put a link in the, the description or up in a card if you wanna take a look at that back when it came out, what we focused on rather than raw performance showing it up against the competition, I wanted to take a moment and look at how well it performed when you reduce the power load on it. So rather than tweaking the voltages, what we did was we actually switched it to the lower power butt setting and then changed it to power safe. So there's two BIOSes, uh, same thing with Vega 56. It had two different power BIOSes and its power balance state for the Vega 56 actually took it down to 150 watt TDP. Sure, it throttled the core, but it didn't really affect the performance. We even saw that with the Vega 64 liquid cooled edition. Now it went from about a 375 watt TDP card down to around a 200 watt TDP, uh, well, 250 or so. It's kind of hard to calculate on that one because of the way it runs. Now, what we did see was well over a 100 watt reduction from the wall. So actual power consumption reduced well over 100 watts and we stayed very close within 5% of performance. Now, what's going on with the Vega 56 and the Helios 500 is that it's been reduced down to 120 watts. Yes, you're going to see core frequency fluctuation on this, but according to what they're saying is you're seeing around about a 2% performance variation from the low power state. So if you're staying within that performance variation, this is still gonna be a very competitive chip to the GTX 1070 that's in the Nvidia variant of the, of the laptop. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how these things pan out once they're both in the, well, on the market and once people get their hands on them love to get my hands on one, but that's not probably not gonna be in the cards. So this really does look like it could be a full blown desktop replacement, uh, both, both sides actually, either one. But it's really interesting to see Vega that's been kind of absent from the desktop market outside of the initial launch, making its way into the mobile scene in some way other than an APU. So let us know what you think about this. Do you think that the desktop variant would have, been, should, would have benefited from an even lower power bio state because with the performance as close as it is to the unrestrained version of it and the runaway power, it could have really changed the, the story that we got with Vega, you know, as far as the power envelope goes. Love to hear your thoughts on that. It's been Keith with WCCF Tech TV and we'll catch you in the next video.